Check one, two, one, two. What's up, everybody? DJ Divine Justice here, aka DJ Wu Tang is for the children. Shout out to Mikey Fresh over at the Goodness Pop Up. Today, I'm going to be talking about chopping up samples in a machine. So, here I've got a kind of classic scratch sample break that you'll probably recognize. Let you hear it. So it goes on like that for a while. Usually when you import a sample to the beginning, it's in polyphony eight. Um, so that means that on this one, it will be able to play up to eight times and have that overlap each other. Now that's not what we want. Also, side note, if you do shift and mute, it'll stop playing so you don't have the craziness continue. Um, what we're gonna do is go into sampling. So now you can see the actual waveform of that sample, and if I hit it, it'll start to play. Now we're going to want to be in manual mode for this. Um, also, you'll see auto snap is on. Auto snap kind of goes immediately to whatever the nearest transient is. That's not good or bad, just depends on what you want to do. Also, uh, in that same polyphony idea, if you scroll over two sides, and you turn mono on, what that'll do is that when you chop up your samples, it'll put the polyphony of them all into one, so it'll only play once, and it'll also put them all in the same choke group. So if you have like an open hi-hat and a closed hi-hat, if you play the open hi-hat, when you go back to the closed hi-hat, it'll choke that off. So that's what choke groups are. Um, so what you'll notice also is that as I'm chopping up the samples, since I'll get more then 16 slices, it'll open up a new pad down here in order for me to keep on going. So let's do some uh, manual slicing and then you'll also be able to see that it's manually, as I'm manually slicing, it's, it's creating the chops there on the display. Um, it's blinking here, letting me know to stop, start there, and then it'll blink to the next one and that's kind of like leading you through so you know how to chop it up. <laughs> Now we've got those chops. So now, when you go to apply, which is what you'll need to do to actually apply these chops to a direction, there's two ways that you can do it. Um, well, two of the ways is you'll see you have your sounds, which you have 16 sounds per group and then over here you have your group. So right now this is lit up meaning that it's recognizing that just that one sound is where this whole sound and chop lives. So if I'm just on the sound and I click OK then we're still in group one and we're now it chops over to keyboard mode. So in keyboard mode technically if we go to pad mode it's all on one pad. All the rest of these pads are empty. It's just on pad one, and it has split those pads, sorry, to split those chops over the keyboard. So you can see that in keyboard mode, it shows you it's starting at C negative two and going up, and then I have the first 16. And you'll notice, That this they are chopping each other off so instead of you hearing the whole sample of if I jump to this next one you'll just hear the beginning now since it's in keyboard mode and I've already gotten to the first 16 in order to get to the next ones you just go octave up and then
and the first row will be the same as the the top row will be the same as the bottom row when you octave up. So if I were to octave back down. But this is just the point so you can see. And if you have something like a keyboard, or if I go over and do shift keyboard mode over here. So you can see that's, if this was our keyboard, it would be like C0, C1, and C2 if you were playing a keyboard, but it spreads that over the keyboard. So that's a good way of, if you want to be able to sequence more than 16 slices, um, because that's how it chops it up this way. Now, the other way is, if I do shift and undo, um, I still have all those slices. Let's redo that last slice. Now, still in sampling mode, still just have my slices, haven't applied it yet. If I go to apply, and instead of applying that to a slice, sorry, to a sound, if I were to apply that to an actual group, so I can press group B here, because that's the next group over, and you'll see that this is flashing, and then I click OK. What it's going to do instead is just take the first 16 slices. So now, not in keyboard mode, we're in pad mode. Because now in pad mode, we have instead of one sound in pad mode, where everything's all on that one pad and just spread over one sound's keyboard, we're in group B, where there's 16 sounds. And it's just taking the first 16 sounds. same thing where it's choking each other out because we have the mono on but it stops at 16 because there's only 16 sounds per group but what that also means is that the keyboard mode now works as if you have let's get one that's got so if we go if we're on this sound and we go into keyboard And you can see over here, kind of. You can go real high, you can also octave down. So if you want to play a sample, but to be able to spread it off a keyboard and play it in different um, tones, then you'd want to actually apply your slices to a group and then when you're in the group switch over to keyboard mode and then play it that way. Um, you could also can't really play chords because it's monophonic because we switched it over to that um, mono mode. So back to pad mode. going back over. Shout out to Cold Crush. Shh. Back to pad one, which is on keyboard mode. And it's going to sound all crazy. So I can go back to pad one, back to sampling. going to apply that to pad one. Say OK. And then since I'm in pad mode, where would that be? Keyboard, then I can octave up like I said before. And get to all my slices. Because if you go back and see, those are all the slices. So I've got well more than 16. But it's just a difference of why you're trying to sample, what you're trying to sample, how long that's gonna be. If it's just a break beat, you know, you can use different modes, so you also have um, grid mode, split, and detect. Detect is kind of interesting where if you change the um, sensitivity, it'll slowly start to populate 
its own slices based on what it sees as the highest kind of transient marker and then split and grid are just based on um, either splitting it into equal amounts of slices or grid is based on not only the slices but also the BPM that's calculated when it analyzes the sample. So this has been a little quick tutorial about chopping up samples on machine. As usual, DJ Divine Justice signing out. Practice and enjoy. And I'll check you on the next one. Peace.